so yesterday I asked my community, is there any microcomputers I've not yet covered on my channel? And somebody suggested the Enterprise. And here we are, this is the Enterprise. And funny enough, it skipped my memory to actually cover this one. So the Enterprise, it was originally announced back in 1983, but it didn't see a release till 1985. So of course, by 1985, we've got the ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64. Uh, those two were really big in the UK at the time. And this one just was a commercial failure because of setbacks, that type of thing. So the Enterprise then, as we can see by my wallpaper, is a really nice looking computer. I've never actually owned one of these. I owned most micros in the early 90s when you could pick these up at a British car boot sales for the next and nothing. But this one I've never touched. So let's get into this setup guide. So for this, I'm going to be showing you how to use EP32. So EP32 is a fairly good emulator and I'm going to leave the link in my description for this one. So uh, there's a couple of setbacks on this emulator and it's not actually been touched by the looks of it since 2006. There's a couple of emulators to download, but if you want a really easy setup, this is the one to go for. I was playing with this one last night. And it took me a little while to get to grips of how to use it, but it's not actually that bad once you figure it out. And this is where Just Jamie comes and I'm going to show you how to get up and running, uh, playing some uh, classic games. So you're going to find a lot of games on Enterprise or Spectrum ports. So uh, let's download the version 1.20. Uh, don't go for the sources one, just go for this top link just here. And we're going to download this into a zip file. Now, let me just tell you that this emulator is not an installer. This is a portable emulator. So right click on your desktop, go to new folder and just call this one EP32 just to extract your contents of that zipped folder. So open up this new folder. Right click, I use WinRAR, of course, you might use 7-zip or another extraction tool, but WinRAR works perfect for me to extract things. Extract here. And here we go. So we can now delete this zip file. We no longer need this one. So first things first, if you want to use BASIC and you want to program in BASIC, then the Enterprise, you needed a module to actually plug in. So whereas most computers, would boot up into basic with the enterprise you would need to put in a module into the computer so if we go into the roms folder just here we got a series of different rom files basic and exodos so let's open up this emulator and just uh, give you a little glimpse of what's inside of here so this is the interface and it takes a few seconds to uh, boot up and this is it. So this is what you would have seen on a real machine. Uh, so if you're looking to buy an Enterprise 64 or Enterprise 128, there's two variants of it. Obviously, 64K of RAM and 128K of RAM. This is it. So expect to pay around 400 to 600 pounds as of right now on eBay for one of these machines. They're not cheap. Uh, only 80,000 units were sold back in 1985. By 1986, the company had uh, just vanished and they were in a lot of debt. So let's take a look at this. So this is what you get. I'm pressing enter to enter into this. So we're going to want to run some games, of course, but we need to do a bit more work inside of this folder just here. So first of all, I'm going to create a new folder inside of this folder I've created at 32 and I'm going to just call this one tapes. So T A P E S. And whilst I'm in here, just to clean things up, I'm going to create another folder called disks. Now, originally the enterprise computers only were cassette based, but later on the disks came and then you had hard drive attachments. So let me show you anyway how to do this. So I'm going to grab a game and I'm going to get a tape cassette game. And I'm going to drag it inside of my tapes folder. So inside of my tapes folder, I've just put in several different files. So for tapes on the enterprise emulator, it's going to largely accept comms. So these are extensions.com. It's also going to take .prgs and .trns. 
So let's go back to the emulator itself. So I'm going to open up the app32.exe. Now, this emulator is very fussy of its configuration. So if you're going to be loading cassette tape images. So first of all, then we need to go to hardware. If we go to load memory config, and the one you need to select to load up these tape images is the one which says with tape. So I'm going to double left click on this one and it's going to load up or reset this emulator. Press enter just to go inside the machine itself. And from here, we're going to go to file, select directory for tape files. And the folder we created just now called tapes, what we're going to do is locate that folder so it's on my desktop so the ep32 folder i've created and if we just scroll down there's our tapes folder okay so it's now set that directory so if i type into the emulator the command start it's going to open up that folder which i've just set that directory to so i'm going to load up a game here in my folder and i'm going to load up this trn And here we go. Now, in ter terms of joysticks to be used on this emulator, I've got my PlayStation 3 controller hooked up to my laptop doing this. And if I go to control setup, I'll notice under control one joystick, I can't seem to get my controller to register with this emulator. So... The developer obviously last updated this some time ago, so it needs a new update, but it's not been updated. But we can still play these classics. So what I'm going to do is just use my keyboard, and I'm going to press 3 to start this game. And by using cursors on my keyboard and the space bar, I can actually play this. Now you're going to find uh, with some of these cassette files, uh, some are hit and miss, and some's going to work perfectly fine, just like this one. So it's uh, it's not a completely perfect emulator like other emulators on my channel that I've covered in the past. But, uh, you know, games like this one, it will work fine. So another thing I've noticed with uh, this emulator itself, if we go into the full screen mode, it will crash. So let me just show you an example of this. If I go to... If I go to options, it says toggle full screen windowed mode. So if I press F4 on my keyboard right now, it crashes. And, you know, that's a shame. So there's a couple of setbacks with this emulator. But for those out there wanting a little bit of what the enterprise computers have to offer, you don't want to pay out four to six hundred pounds uh, initially. This is a good way to kind of give it a bit of a tester so let's move on to disk image files. So I found largely that the best way to do this is by using .img as the extension for disk image files. And to do this, we need to go to hardware, load memory config. And this time, instead of using with tape, we're going to use something else, anything really, but not with tape. So for this, I'm going to use the bottom one here, which is the 128K XOS 2.3 XDOS.config. And if you fail to load anything used in this configuration, then just go up to another config file. But remember, for disks, you don't want to be selecting the one which says with tape. So I'm going to use this one. And that's going to reboot the emulator. Now to load from disk, what we're going to do is just simply go up to file, configure disk drives, and drive A, we're going to go here to use disk image. So check this, go to insert, and what we're going to do, we're now going to navigate to that image, that IMG folder that I created earlier to open this. So F32, and here's my image folder, IMG folder. If I open this, it will say at the bottom here, it only accepts .epi, .ima, and .imz. If we actually open this and go to all files, we're going to find my disk image. If I double left click on this one, press OK. And what I'm going to do is just type into this now, load. And this will boot you straight into the disk image, as you can see. As you can see, 
And this is a compilation disc image that uh, somebody put together. Uh, looks like they did this back in 1991. So let's just load up a disc game. And of course, like I say, uh, it's very hard to configure a controller. Uh, my PS3 controller is pretty robust in terms of emulators and it just won't pick up this one. But you can still use the keys on your keyboard for this. The cursor keys and spacebar work fine. So let's do a bit of Rambo. So press enter to select this one. So here you go, typical micro loading screen. We're gonna have the flashy borders appear in a second. So for this, I'm just pressing uh, the keys on my key keyboard. So S for start, name, just Jamie, enter. And, you know, funny enough, I was only watching uh, Rambo last night with my fiance, First Blood. What a classic. <laughs> it might be an old film, but damn, it's good. Uh, tonight we're watching First Blood Part 2, which is by far the best. <laughs> so this is it. I'm a sucker for micro games. I just love the charm they bring. I mean, look at this. Uh, you know, a younger audience will look at this and think this is trash, but I don't care. You know, I, I love this type of thing. Uh, it's very nostalgic. So that's it. So, so let's just close this down for now. So that's it from my Enterprise Setup Guide 2023. Like I say, there is a couple of emulators out there, but largely this one is the easiest. And it's a little bit twiddly, granted, but you can get there with a bit of perseverance, just like myself. It's not the easiest emulator by any stretch. Of the imagination but uh give it a go it's not actually that bad uh follow me on social media i'm on facebook instagram tiktok and twitter and um if there's anything else you want me to cover on my channel just message me comment and i will look into it just like i've done with the enterprise but until next time stay retro